Do you trust school? Do you trust your instructors, your peers? And do you have a choice? How we answer those questions will vary greatly based on a number of factors. So we have trust, vulnerability, choice, control, power. These are all interconnected when it comes to learning. And they're all interconnected around issues of privacy as well. Well, what is privacy? Uh, that's actually pretty hard and much better people uh, in this field than I am have been very careful to explain we can't you know, totally define privacy in the ways that we used to. The question of privacy and education is intimately tied up with questions of neoliberalism and justice and corruption and uh, copyright and the freedom of expression. You know, how much privacy do you have to hand over in school? Interestingly, schools are becoming, in some cases, extremely, extremely controlling of their students when it comes to privacy. This uh, industrialized, neoliberal, market-oriented approach to education not only fails to educate kids, but puts them in a place where we can't teach them about privacy and where we actually have to take their privacy away. To have privacy isn't the same as to be safe, and it isn't the same as to be hidden. In 2010, a school district in Pennsylvania, which was doing something good at one level by sending kids home with laptops so they could uh, use modern technology, what they did with them, though, the, at the school system did with them is very bad. They put spyware on them so that kids were being actually observed in their homes via the webcams in the laptops. A pretty disgusting act. How do you find out who's spying on your internet connection? Who's censoring proxy are you behind? What kind of company are they? Who's paying them? How much money do they pay them? What are their practices for data retention and handling? All of that stuff is stuff that they're not only not encouraged to figure out, but in fact, they're in many ways prohibited from finding out. Learning requires a certain vulnerability. We have to recognize that we don't know things. We have to be open to not knowing things. We have to listen and experiment and sometimes stumble and fail. We have to be open to learning. Uh, and this is not about open education. This is actually about sort of closed minds. If your child takes any self-help measures to prevent people from spying on, the, on her while she's at school, she'll actually get exp expel expelled, excluded, or suspended for interfering with the school's ability to spy on her, to stop her from looking at naughty pictures on the internet and failing at doing that. It's one thing for a teacher to recognize that you're still struggling with her eight times table, for example, but it's another thing entirely for a piece of software that the school mandates you use to track massive amounts of, massive quantities of other data about your progress. Another school, I believe in Texas, asked kids uh, to take wear devices and it would basically be tracking them everywhere. And parents who discovered this, some of them were kind of freaked out as they should be. What right did the school have to do this? Well, the schools can make a lot of decisions on these levels. What they need to do is be absolutely transparent about what they propose to do before actually doing it. So there is no way that you can stop public surveillance without stop stopping private surveillance. And there is no way that you can stop private surveillance without ending public surveillance. We have to work on all of these things. And that is, in fact, the bad news, that it's impossible for us to give students more agency without at the same time working on reducing the perception of schools as a special form of factory. And it's impossible to give students more privacy without ending this crazy cronyistic business model where we surveil our kids in the name of keeping them safe from naughtiness. All this data and metadata represents an unprecedented opportunity to learn more about how students learn, or at least that's what we're told. But what does this data collection and data mining mean in terms of power? and privacy, trust, and vulnerability.